Hey everybody, welcome to Comedy on Vinyl. Sorry it's been two weeks as opposed to one, but we do have a great episode this week. It's with Dave Holmes. We're talking about a National Lampoon album that he really liked growing up. And it's a great album, and Dave is great. Dave is always funny. He was kind enough to be in my documentary, Lords of Soaptown, uh, which I'm actually finishing up this month. And uh, he sat down with me for an hour to talk about this album. Uh, also, please make sure to follow Dave on Twitter and uh, on Tumblr. Uh, he's on Facebook as well. And uh, make sure to watch A Drink With Dave, which is his web series. It's a great show. Uh, it's at adrinkwithdave.com. And be sure to donate uh, to his Kickstarter when that goes uh, when that goes up, because that's to help him get Season 2 made. Also, we have another live episode coming up May 28th, Monday, 7.30 p.m. at Improv Olympic IO West uh, here in Los Angeles. And uh, it's going to be a great show. You can buy your tickets on TicketWeb. They're only $5 a piece. Uh, you can get a two-for-one deal if you show up at the box office. Show the invite on your phone or a printout. Um, make sure to RSVP on the Facebook event page, which you can find through our Facebook page. Um, just look for uh, Comedy on Vinyl and uh, like us there. And then go to the event page and RSVP. Get your tickets. Uh, Mike's going to be there. Jeremy's going to be there. I'm going to be there, of course. And uh, we do have another guest uh, coming up that we just can't announce yet. So, so, please, RSVP, come to the show, enjoy, sit down, get a little drunk, and uh, please enjoy this episode. Thank you so much. Oh, hello there. I'm Newton Ames, talking to you on behalf of the Monolithic Oil Corporation about today's energy situation. You know, if we all just sacrifice a little, we can pull together to beat the current problems of not enough energy. And Monolithic is doing its part by killing most of the birds that nest around our beautiful oil refineries. Birds eat up a lot of food. And as everyone knows, food takes energy to grow and prepare. So the fewer birds there are, the less energy will be wasted. Now, how can you help? Well, if there are any old folks around the house, just set them outside at night. This looks like a long, hard winter, and the fewer people there are, the less energy demand there'll be. Leaving the old folks outside is nothing new. The Eskimos do it all the time. And they know a thing or two about surviving in cold weather without much heat. <laughs> you betcha. Sure. All right, let's do this. Hey, everybody. Oh, oh yeah. So we're, <laughs> we're off and running. Yeah. I'm sorry. But don't apologize. I wasn't ready either. Right. Um, uh, hey, everybody. Welcome to Comedy on Vinyl. This week with me is Dave Holmes. Hi. And uh, we're doing National Lampoons. That's not funny. That's sick. Yes. And uh, I, I'm always surprised when people, you know, tell me what they'd like to talk about. Yeah. You know, um, some people, like, you're just like, ah, Steve Martin, Bill right. Cosby. Nobody brought this one up, and I've yeah. seen it a million times at the store, so what's, oh. uh, why'd you pick it? Well, I picked it because I think one of my brothers had it, like, had it on a cassette. Like, somebody found it in a used record store, and so they, they like, got a duped copy of it. Yeah, yeah. I listened to it a couple of times, and mm-hmm. immediately lost interest, and, uh-huh. then, and I just became obsessed with it. Yeah. Because it was, you know, it sort of represented my older brothers, who were much older than me. Right. And it was, like, it was a kind of humor that I didn't really get. Sure. Because it's... Sure. Now that I'm looking at it, it's what, 1977? I think so. Something, Something like right. that? And yeah. a lot of it, I think, was recorded before. Yeah. Um, and it's just weird. It's just like, it, it, it made... It was one of the first things that made me go, like, oh, this is what I want to do. Yeah. Like, stand-up comedy, I always liked, but uh-huh. it seemed like it was... Like magic people doing it, right? You know what I mean, right? Like people who just were touched by something that I didn't have, mm-hmm. but like ensemble comedy, yeah, is like just a bunch of people goofing around, sure, having yeah. fun, and uh, and it was sort of like a, a Carol Burnett type of a deal, but like yeah. much hipper and cooler, yeah. And they talked about a bunch of stuff that I didn't know what it was, mm-hmm. yep. But there, but there was also sort of super crazy broad comedy. Yeah. It was, it, it was, and all these people, like Christopher Guest, is on this thing. That's right, Richard Belzer and. You know, all these people who went on to be huge. Yeah, and I read all that after I listened to it, so I have to yeah. listen to it again, because I honestly don't know if I'm going to recognize their young voices. Yeah, you know, at this point. it's very strange. But yeah, but there's, it's it's a mixture of like sort of brainy kind of, com- or, I don't know if it's brainy, right? but I just didn't get it. Sure, yeah, know, yeah, yeah, They're talking about, you know, things that went on in the 70s and stagflation and stuff like <laughs> yeah, that that yeah, we don't yeah. understand anymore. No. But like, but then also really broad shit where there's, you know. Birds fucking yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Pretty pretty simple. It's uh, yeah, it's actually. crazy. There and I remember there was a uh, there's something on. I haven't listened to this in a very long time. Okay, um, but there's a uh, there's an Olympic uh, gymnast yes. portion oh, of God. it. God, yeah, it's just hilarious. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, they're, they're just great little moments that I think are are hilarious and that really kind of informed my sense of humor. 
Sorry for talking for nine minutes. No, that's what we need. Oh, this good. Is, this is good. Like, this is uh, what my, we want. My co-host, Mike, is not here. And, yeah. uh, sometimes he brings it together when I just sit there and literally go, mm-hmm. uh, so. That's fine. But I'm not going to do that I can today. yap. I'm not going to do that today. Right. Um, and, and I listened to this for the first time not that long ago, obviously, because yeah. you, you, you recommended it. And yeah. holy shit, like, it, it's... I haven't listened to anything like this ever. Yeah. I mean, the most thing it feels like to me is like Fire Sign Theater. Did right. you ever listen to any Fire Never Sign? did. No. Never okay. did. No. Um, for that, that, for whatever reason, never appealed to me. Yeah. It, it always, even when I was kind of young, mm-hmm. and I think I probably discovered this when I was maybe 13, 14. Uh-huh. And even then, I felt like um, those are, like that seemed nerdy to yeah. me. Yeah. Even though yeah. I didn't get that either. Right. It, it just seemed like... Um, it was like the difference between Saturday Night Live and Dr. Demento. Yeah. It was the yeah. difference between this and uh, Fireside Theater. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they seem like they seem like people who own top hats. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. No, I could see yeah. that. So maybe a little get on board. A little more hipsterish. A little have, more hipsterish, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I and I haven't I, I've only listened to a little bit of Fire Sign and I've gotten into it more. I think because of the enthusiasm of some of my friends who recommended yeah. we review it specifically for this. Yeah. Um and y- yeah, I mean I, I noticed uh, yeah, yeah, I can I can see that. It's it's this kind of uh, it's, it is intelligent. It's yeah. intelligent humor, even though the subject matter, again, is not um, necessarily, because a lot of it's yeah. about, uh, let's see, there's a lot of rape, there's a lot, a lot of, of sex. And a I lot of rape. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and there's like Mr. Rogers, sort of. Really, really freaky, creepy Mr. Freaky Rogers. Creepiness. Yeah, Bill Murray is all over Yeah, this. that's right. Okay, I thought I heard his voice on there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for you then, um, and again, I'm, I'm glad that somebody else is bringing this up. I'm really happy. Oh, goodness gracious. Excuse me. <laughs> Without me having to bring it up myself, is um, like having that experience with another person, maybe with an older person introducing uh-huh. you to comedy. Yeah. Um, did you have moments as a kid just sitting and listening to any vinyl comedy on your own or with uh, friends? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, had, uh, I had a friend whose dad was really into Steve Martin, uh-huh. so, we, so we would just sit next to the speaker and listen to Let's Get Small, uh, just over and over. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Um, there really wasn't... I, I mean, I guess there was a lot of comedy on vinyl, but like George Carlin I'm looking at right now, mm-hmm. I knew people who had it. I remember seeing it at the record store and being mm-hmm. terrified by the cover. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I was kind of, um, I guess I was, what the hell is going on? What is that? What is going on? <laughs> oh, it's repulsive. Uh, unprofessional. Really unprofessional. unprofessional. Really uh, unprofessional. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. It's fine. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you know, I was kind of, um, again, like when I was a kid, it was sort of the early days of HBO. Yeah. So there would be like Robert Klein specials yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. And again, it was a little brain, I don't know if it was brainy, but it was certainly for older people. Of but course. I didn't care. Exactly. You know, yeah. I would just sit and watch it. Anything that like other people laughed at, I just mm-hmm. felt like I should also be laughing. Yeah, that's, that's a big thing I noticed in the development of a lot of comedians is that, that desire to want to just not necessarily go along with the crowd, but you know, you see all these people are having so much fun and joy yeah. and, and you want to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's like, it seemed to me when I was a kid. Oh, now I'm looking at you. You own a top hat. I do own a top hat. Jeez, I'm I don't sorry. wear it a lot. Oh, I'm eating my words. I'm That's really okay. Words. Um, but I, I, uh, I, it, to me, it seemed like a different way to express intelligence. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, my first, you know, experiences with smart people were them, you know, being smart in school. Or right, whatever. right, right. Or like, you know, like looking at scientists or fucking whatever. Sure. But this was like, the, you know, these people seem to me to be just as smart, but that's yeah. how they express their intelligence. Right. Was like by writing sketches and goofing around with each other. And it was like, I am on board. Yeah. You yeah. Know? What were your first experiences like, you know, doing, isn't that great? So good. good. There's, uh, I was just, I don't know if they did another one that wasn't a picture disc. I've only found a few com- well, comedy ones. the copy that I have, because I finally did find it on vinyl mm-hmm. years ago, is that, but it's, yeah. on, it's on this cover. So, anyway. Uh, sorry. No, you no problem. Uh, I don't remember what I was saying, but I'm sure, first, I'm sure it was really intelligent. Yeah. Uh, no, your first uh, experience, like, performing or, or, mm-hmm. or doing sketch or, or what you call ensemble comedy, which I actually like, sounds better to me. But. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I, I uh, in college, I got mm-hmm. asked, there, there was, like, this secret society at uh-huh. my school. It was uh, 13, er, 12 seniors and one junior. Okay. And uh, it called the Crusadists, uh-huh. the Crusaders, the Holy Cross Crusaders. Mm-hmm. It was a terrible mascot, <laughs> um, really. Uh, but then it was like it was like this show that would happen at the end of the year, and it was uh-huh. like twelve seniors, one junior, and then that group would pick next year's. Like the one junior would stay on to sort mm-hmm. of supervise, uh, but every everybody would pick one more person to sort of carry on the tradition. Okay. And the rule was that if you asked to join, you could not join. Okay. <laughs> uh, it was like a total secret thing, and mm-hmm. I remember seeing that freshman year and being like. 
that is my only goal for my education is to be asked to join this group when yeah. I'm a senior. Yeah. And I was. And uh, and I was so fucking excited. Yeah. Like, I didn't know what to do with myself. And like, and it's, you know, two week. I think it's, uh, maybe it's just one weekend worth of shows that you mm-hmm. do. Maybe two. Um, but like, everyone's so keyed up for it. It's the end of the year and everyone's got spring fever and yeah. it's like, and they've come to expect it and you make fun of the people of like, you know, your classmates in sure. high school, uh, but also the faculty and, and, but then also just do some goofy sketches and stuff like that. And we had so much fucking fun. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just like, for the first time ever, I was like, it's like, I could potentially do this. Right. Right. You know, uh, it was, you know, I was set up to succeed because mm-hmm. it's, you know, it was a brand right then and right. people were ready to laugh. But I was like, man, I am, this is what I want to do. Uh, and then it took me a few years to really get serious about it. I graduated mm-hmm. and I went into advertising, but I, I would take like improv classes at night and do some crappy, like really crappy uh, sketch and improv shows in uh-huh. bars where nobody wanted to watch us or listen to us. <laughs> right, like right. we'd be, we'd be on one end and the TV would be on the other and there would be a game. So we'd be playing for backs of heads. Yeah. And, uh, and so like that was, you know, demoralizing, but I still, I just loved it. I loved it more than anything in the world. Yeah. So Do, can you it. think of anything, uh, anything on here specifically that might've informed, <laughs> I mean, or is it just a general, generally just informed you as a comedian? Is there anything specific about this album? That I think what this album made me think was that like, it doesn't have to make sense. Sure. It can just be funny. Because mm-hmm. there are a couple moments on here that are utterly surreal. Absolutely. And uh, and those were my favorite moments. And it was just, I think they were probably just high mm-hmm. in, in the yeah. studio. Mm-hmm. And doing mountains of cocaine. Of course. They didn't know any better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they were just following their own muse. So yeah. like, I remember thinking like, I'm just going to do shit that I think is funny. And mm-hmm. then maybe somebody else will think it's funny too. Yeah. And throw things in there that would make me laugh if somebody else did them. Yeah. I'm going to do them. I'm not going to like... And I've gone back on this a million times, but I don't, like, I went into it thinking, like, I'm not going to do things that other people want me to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. Right. You know? Right. And I did. And I wasn't as successful as these guys, but it worked out. Um, yeah, it's, uh, there, there are a couple things on here that just make me roar. Yeah. And, be, and because they're just so weird. Hey, asswipe, where'd you get that Sansucci amplifier? I got it at stereos and stuff, jag off, and it only cost me $9.99. $9.99? What a deal! For the amplifier and the tuner? Yeah, and that's not all shit face. I also got an anti-static record cloth and two HLH Proud Quadio Quattro Quirk 3000 speakers that you're drooling all over, scumbag. Only $9.99? I must be some sort of neander fuck for not having gone down the stereos and stuff and got one already. I gotta fire up some money. Gotta get my head up my ass sometimes. If you've got your head up your ass about stereos, come to Stereos and Such, located at the Bergen Shopping Mall. Uh, did you, can you think of any sketches from your years in that in that troupe uh, for your year in that troupe? I'm oh, sorry, right. that um, stand out. I kind of don't really. Yeah, or I do, but they wouldn't make sense. Right, right. Like right, you right. know, uh, there, okay, there was one thing. Alive had just come out. Uh huh. And uh, and so and it was a really snowy winter. Mm-hmm. So I wrote a sketch where and one of the deans of students was just this enormous fat guy. Uh huh. And uh, and so the final sketch in our thing was like a bunch of us were were snowed into Milady, which uh-huh. was a one M U L L A D Y, which was one of the the dorms. Uh huh. And it's where Dean Joe McGuire, who was super fat, lived. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so they're all snowed in, and there was nothing left in the vending machines but those strawberry wafers. <laughs> and so they decided that they were just going to eat Dean Joe. Uh, it's not that funny. I mean, you just have to know that he's super fat and whatever. Yeah, right. So, no, that's good. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, I remember writing that and people just roared when, like, when yeah. there was the whole thing of, like, we're going to eat Dean Joe. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not funny, but like, but it was a perfect example of like a bunch of people who knew who that guy was yep. and they wanted to laugh at him. Sure. And it was like, this is a joke that we all get. And every night it got like this huge laugh and it just made me yeah. grow two feet. Sure. You know? Yeah. Is, is that the first time, I mean, that you had that experience? I mean, everybody likes to talk, I mean, everybody likes to ask about somebody's first experience with a laugh. Right. You know? So right. I just out of curiosity, it's like the first... Like, I know, I remember... I remember... I don't remember what I said, but I do remember, like, the first big laugh that I ever got mm-hmm. in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. I, I said something in class and everybody laughed, and it was, like, the first time that people had laughed at, at, at me on purpose. Yeah. yeah. Laughed with me, I guess. Sure. Yeah. Um, or, or laughed because of me or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't even remember what it was that I said, but yeah. it just... It was, like, I had this feeling of power. Yeah. I was yeah. like, oh, wait a minute. Because, because, like, in the time leading up to it, I was, like, I tested well, but I was not, never a good student. I yeah. Was a terrible athlete. Sure. Terrible. Okay. It's probably a common theme in this show, yep. I imagine. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, but, like, when that happened, when, like, when people laughed, and I had to, like, hold for laughter. Sure. I was like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. I think I know what I do. I think I, I know, like, where I fit in this world. Now, right. You know? Right. And I, I, I wish I could remember what I said, but I can't. 
No, and I, I, I'm the same way. I, there are a couple times when it was way later, I think, for me because, yeah. you know, you know, poor athlete, too. And, right. Uh, like, not, not very popular kid. Yeah. So you can imagine. I have a top hat, so not, uh, you know. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, you have a Nerdist frame thing. I do. I went to the, uh, what was it, the second episode that they shot, and then, like, they were giving out the cards. And Chris, oh, yeah? Chris Hardwick pointed me out, and I was like, like, just, like, melted like a little little baby. It was He's a dream, dream, isn't he? He's the nicest guy on the Such fucking planet. Nice and it kills me. I hate this. Like, the last three episodes, I've been gushing about Chris Hardwick like a prick. I'm not trying to. Yeah. <laughs> He's just so nice to He's me. He's such a nice guy. Yeah. And Such I don't know nice how guy. he does that. Yeah. yeah. Is that, did you guys know each other at MTV? I'll just no, we, we didn't uh, We didn't overlap. No? But, oh, that's right. He was shooting but, out here. But, pardon? He was shooting out here, I think, at the time. He was shooting out here, and also that show was off the air a couple years before I oh, started. Oh, that's right. Yeah. But, uh, but he mm-hmm. is one of those people who, like, when I saw him out, when I would mm-hmm. see him out, because mm-hmm. I would occasionally, like, we don't have a ton of friends in common, but mm-hmm. we would sometimes be in the same space. Sure. And he would, like, we would give the nod mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. each other and talk yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And, and I feel like, because like, there are a lot of people who don't do that. I take the, the fraternity of MTV very seriously. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and there are a lot of people who don't. Like, they work there, and then it's, you know, a part of their life that's over, and they don't want to talk about it anymore. Right. And go on. And, uh, and it's like, oh, you work there too? I don't care. Which uh-huh. I think is, you know. It's shitty. Yeah. But yeah. people who do take it seriously and understand that, like, we have d- we have had a similar life experience. Right. And that we might have some things to talk about. Like, mm-hmm. those are my people. Yeah. And Chris is absolutely one of them. That's awesome. Just such a nice guy. Yeah. Such a nice guy. Um, I, I won't I won't talk about MTV too much, because I'm going to talk about it a lot. Oh, but right. but uh, I'm just curious, because uh, I didn't know that you'd gone into advertising. That was the yeah. first thing that you did. Uh-huh. Uh, a couple things. A... Uh, I'm just curious what that might have done for your uh, your comedic instincts or you know drive, and then how doing comedy informed you having to basically just be a VJ. Which I mean, you were a funny right. dude, but you didn't right. get to be you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, again, I, I didn't. By the time I got that job, I didn't really feel like a professional comic. Like yeah. I knew that I could be like I could think on my feet and I could be funny in the moment and yeah. whatever. And I knew how to. I knew the basics of improv. Yeah. I didn't really go crazy far with it, but I knew the basics of it. Mm-hmm. So I, I was, I, I came into it sort of confidently. Advertising, though, like, most of my job was looking at spreadsheets and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. not, I wanted to believe that it was really creative. And, right. And I probably would have been able to make that move if I had stuck with it. Sure. But I was kind of stuck in the, you know, entry level, you know, looking at Excel. Fun. A lot. Right. And, uh, you know, and fucking proofreading and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so I can't say that it did, except that at the end of every day, I was determined to do something else. Yeah. Like, I was like, uh, I, this is not what I want to do in yeah. my life. And, and after about four years, when I uh, when I got the MTV job, I was actually, I think I was, I was, I was temping mm-hmm. uh, through an agency called Mademoiselle. Uh-huh. So that was not at all uh, emasculating to show up. <laughs> I was working at a bank. Um, uh, like, I had just left my advertising job. And, mm-hmm. and I was, I, I, I think my final thing is that I worked at a bank, like, doing presentations for investment mm-hmm. bankers and stuff like that because they would literally their their like presentation mm-hmm. putting together a pool yeah. it was 24 hours a day Jesus so so you could go in at any time of the day and mm-hmm. work as long as you want and they paid a fortune I was making more than I was making in advertising oh shit and, uh, and but you had to like you know it was starting to be like these investment bankers who were just out of grad school were starting uh-huh. to be a year or two younger than me. Uh huh. And <clears throat> so, yeah. like, having to put together like PowerPoints and shit for them. Yeah. It was a little rough. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, I, I had quit advertising because I was like, I need to devote all of my energy to trying to perform. Yeah. You know, because I was 25 or 26 or whatever. And, and I and it was like, I don't have to support anybody. I don't have sure. to do anything. I don't have to make anybody happy but myself. I'm in New York. It's crazy hard to live here. And yeah. if I'm going to do it, I should be doing something that I love. And so, and luckily this thing came kind of quick. Yeah. Um, I, I was just totally struck by lightning. Mm-hmm. Like, right place at the right time. But, but it happened. Which is nuts. But I, I, that was a long-winded way of saying, like, <laughs> the, I think what advertising gave me was, like, a fire under my ass to do something Sure, else. sure. Because a lot of it is really soul-crushing. Yeah. How did, it, how did it feel being on camera in front of that many people for the first time, and then did you get to use your comedy skills? Like? Uh, yeah, I did. I did. I, th- I think right away I did. Mm-hmm. Because I kind of felt like, like during that whole sort of contest thing, I was, you know, I looked around, mm-hmm. and there were, you know, there were like pretty girls, and there was Jesse, who's like a real character, mm-hmm. and there were, there were a lot of types. Yep. And like, I felt like my, like what I brought to the table was like, I'm a big music nerd, yep. and I'm kind of, like I can be funny. Yeah. On purpose. Yeah. And, uh, and so I tried to use that wherever I could, and mm-hmm. slide in a few lines here and there, and right. like let people know that I was, that I understood what was going on. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, um... Yeah, so I, I did get to be sort of funny at the beginning, but but being on camera, okay, 
my the one thing that I didn't want to do uh-huh. when, when I went in. First of all, I didn't think I would get put on air ever. I thought I might get hired as a writer or something like that, right. which I've been thrilled with. Um, but when I when uh, it started to look like they might put me on air, I was mm-hmm. like, I just want to do the VJ segments yeah. in the studio or on the street or whatever. Don't put me in front of a crowd because uh-huh. even in, in doing improv, I hated talking to the crowd and getting a suggestion and all yeah, that. Yeah. I was great doing characters, but I was sure. very uncomfortable as myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so I was like, Pl- just don't make me like have to work a crowd or mm-hmm. anything like that because I'll fucking fall apart. And, uh, and my first show was like nothing but me working a crowd. <laughs> and like, and thank God they did that because because yeah. it pulled it out of me. I wouldn't have done it. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm the kind of person that like if I'm afraid of it, I'm just not going to do it right. so, unless I'm forced to. And it was, you know, and I wanted this job more than anything in the world. And so yeah. my first job was was that. Yeah. And uh, and I was terrified. I was mm-hmm. absolutely terrified. I was so terrified. It was set in a bar, and uh, and the producer of it, this guy George McTeague, I will never forget him, uh, because like in between segments in the first few shows, uh-huh. uh, he would like furtively order me a beer and then like <laughs> call me back and just like, drink that. <laughs> <laughs> and it, like make me drink it and it, you know what it worked yeah it worked yeah. it was looser you know I mean luckily yes. it didn't become a, too much of a crush <laughs> right right uh, but yeah like I was uh, yeah uh, I, I drank a Corona in mm-hmm. between uh, in commercial breaks for the first few shows that I did and it helped a lot and, and it was the, th- the thing about it was I'm talking a bunch I'm sorry no 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 uh, this is, this the is thing all about it was, was that for a lot of it mm-hmm. I was in shock for yeah. like the first probably more than a year that I worked I on MTV, bet. I was in shock. Yeah. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Yeah. So so people would, you know, everything just immediately got so surreal mm-hmm. that it was like, I, you know, I it, I couldn't think enough to be afraid of a crowd. Yeah. You know, I was yeah. a little reserved, the beer helped, but I couldn't, I, I didn't have it, I couldn't devote enough mental energy to sh- to being afraid. Right. Because right. most of it was just not believing what the fuck was going on. Sure. Thinking I was having a dream. Right. Or whatever. Right. So, yeah. So I was, I was really in shock. Like, I didn't, it didn't hit me until a couple years in. Like, this is my job. This is what I do. Yeah. Then it started to get weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for the, those first, like, the first, like, year or two, I was really like, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Yeah. Did you have as much time to do comedy at that time? or No. And I could kick myself because, well, you know what? I kind of did. My, my schedule wasn't, like, it wasn't backbreaking, but it was definitely unpredictable, and there yeah. was a lot of travel and mm-hmm. all that. And so, and in those years, uh, I remember the, <clears throat> just before the MTV thing happened, one of the uh, one of the sketch groups that I was performing with uh, auditioned for Aspen. Okay. And, uh, and in our Aspen audition, it was all, like, it was three or four comedy groups performing for a live audience, and yeah. there were Aspen people there, and whatever. And, like, right after us was the Upright Citizens Brigade, like, those four. Holy shit. Uh, doing Saigon Suicide Squad, uh-huh. which is fucking hilarious yeah. and like it was the first time I'd ever seen Amy Poehler and I had just gotten off stage and then she started and it was like well A we're not gonna get in <laughs> and B like this woman is the funniest person I've ever seen in my life yeah. and the rest of the crowd was just like the, the other three of course are brilliant as well but sure, like sure. Amy really shined in that one and mm-hmm. like and I was like, God damn it, those, those guys are great. And like a year or so later, mm-hmm. they started their school. Okay. And that like damn first it. wave of people w- is is like Andy Daly and Paul Shear and 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 you know, uh, Rob Hubel and Rob Riggle yeah. and yeah, uh, that's right. Okay. All of those people. And I remember thinking like, I should take classes. Yeah. Because they would be great. Yeah. And uh, but what stopped me uh, is that like I was starting to be on TV, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to be. I didn't want to take a class because sucking is such a huge part of improv. Sure. Yeah. I didn't want to suck in front of people of and course. be recognizable. Yeah. Like yeah. It was my vanity kept me from doing it I because I didn't that. want people to say like, see me on TV and tell their friend like, oh, I had an improv class with that guy and he sucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which is stupid. It's so stupid. I look back at it now like, how much fun could I have had? Right. You know, but whatever. I just I didn't do it. So it seems to be a very uh, freeing thing for people now. It seems to be an okay thing to do if you're as big as John Hamm. You know, yeah. and he'll go out and he. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if he sucks, and, but everybody sucks. Every it doesn't once matter. So yeah. he's got to go out there and risk it. So yeah. I mean, it's. But yeah, I, yeah, I totally yeah, understand why you would have done that. But at the same time, I understand why you would why? regret it at the end of the furious at myself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. So I, 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 I didn't. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was. I, you know, there's a lot. Like I. Uh, Obviously, I had a great time, yeah. uh, all of my time in MTV, but, like, sure. I look back and, and you know, they were so receptive to ideas. Mm-hmm. I could have been pitching so much more. Of course. I could have been, you know, fucking around on stage with great people at night. Like, yeah. there, was, there was a lot that I didn't take advantage of. We're going to take a walk in our neighborhood. So, let's go up the steps. One, two, three. Let's open the door. Let's go outside in the yard, okay? Can you say that? Yard? Sure you can. Hey, we're outside now. Isn't it nice? 
There's a little doggy asleep in the shade over there. His name is Kalijah. Hey, Robert. He's cute, isn't he? Can you say that? Cute? Robert, can I talk to you for just a minute? It's our friend Mr. Heyman from across the way. He has the house right next to ours. He's going to be coming over here in a minute to talk to us. Yeah, I just want to have a word with you, Robert. Scott. Hi, Mr. Heyman. How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing it's pretty good. It's a beautiful good, day yeah. in the neighborhood, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty good, except sure. I got something on my mind. Uh, well, anything you'd like to say, you can say to me. Well, my son, Timmy, he's been spending a lot of time at your Timmy's house. Timmy's a special kid. Yeah, well, I like frankly, him. I don't like him spending so much time over at your house. All Timmy right? has to feed my fish. That's his special Well, job. he's not going to feed him anymore, because I told him not to go over to your house anymore, and I'd appreciate it if you'd stay away. From him. You I, thought what you I'm might have, about? I thought you might have liked the later hosen that I made for him. No, I didn't like it. I thought it was an unusual gift for an adult man to give a child. I lined him with silk so they wouldn't chafe him in the summer. Yeah, listen. Uh, and I, I was going to put a zipper in, but I thought the buttons would be good. What I'm for talking his fingers, about you know? is you and the children in the neighborhood. Uh, I think you spend an inordinate amount of time with kids. You know. But now you you started there after. Um, the state and everything, but how did uh-huh. you run into Tom Lennon? Because, I mean, that is the second yeah. thing I associate with you with most is reading oh, one Oh, so, God, I could kiss so you. so fucking good on that show. Thank you very I much. That was so much fucking fun. God, that was fun. <laughs> um, I, uh, I begged for an audition. That was really? it. Really? Yep. I, uh, I, I loved the first season of that show, obviously, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then I heard that they were <laughs> casting a wider net for the second season, because, yeah. you know, that first season was basically just the cast doing yeah. all the parts. Like yeah. Their faces are blurred That's out. That's right, yeah. But everybody plays three or four parts, right? Mm-hmm. And then they, they were going to start using more people in season two, and uh, and I was like, and I remember I called my manager, and I was like, I don't care how this happens. I've got to get in there. Yeah. Like, I don't just, just that is our top priority right now. Yeah. Get me in that door. Yeah. And uh, and so he did. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that audition is... Like, it, it kills me that that show is not on the air anymore for a lot of reasons. Yeah. But mostly because I want more people to ha- to experience what that audition of is. Of course, yeah. Which is, you go in, and uh, and you talk to the, the casting person, mm-hmm. just like in a waiting room, and her, her question is, uh, did you call the police or did somebody call the police on you? That's all they want to know. Uh-huh. And then, then you tell them that. She goes in, tells the cast and the producers, who are all sitting around a table in character. Uh-huh. And you walk in, and you just start a scene. Holy shit! And just start a scene. Oh, so you got to come in with a character and, yeah. and sort of a rough idea of what your situation mm-hmm, would be. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so so I did, and like, and it was long. It was we were in there for probably a half hour. Fuck. And we and it was and everybody was in character, and it was just fun as hell. Wow. And like I was super nervous because I didn't want to fuck it up. But but as soon as it started, yeah, I started having just a great time. And, uh, and so I had this character, um, he didn't have a name at the time, mm-hmm. um, but he was the proprietor of By Curios, uh-huh. and, uh, and the store was being robbed, and it was like, it was all going on while there were, like, kids taking collectibles away. Okay. And, uh, and so they, they liked that character, and then Rachel Harris came in mm-hmm. uh, with an idea that she was um, Dangle's ex-wife, who needed to get the final divorce paper signed so that she could marry somebody who's even gayer. Yeah. And, uh, and so, th- and thank God, they put... Us together, they were like, "Oh, these, you know, yeah, that is two. We can kill two birds with one stone." Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so that that was it. That was it. And I and I, and I just uh, got a call from them. I'm going to be doing the new movie, Hell Baby. What? Really? I'm super excited. Yeah. Fucking congratulations! Thank you. Holy I'm shit! So excited. Did you? So excited. I, I mean, I, I know people don't always like to talk about things that that necessarily didn't launch, but did you no. work on that? The the you did work on the other pilot, correct? Because I think when I, I interviewed yeah. you for my documentary, yeah, yeah. you had just finished shooting that yeah. other pilot. Yep. It was yes. basically about a Hooters esque. It was a Hooters esque kind of a thing called the Strip, um, or the, I get oh shit, what was the restaurant called? I'm trying I to remember, remember because you told me about it and yeah. I have it on tape somewhere. It was but funny. Uh, it was really. It was and a that's funny what show. everybody said. Everybody thought it was funny. It just didn't get was out. it a three camera? Just then? It was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's stuff what you had mentioned. But yeah. Anyway, it was. It was uh, that was a crazy experience. I mean, it, uh, obviously, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. What I love about them is that like. When you're in, you're in. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's similarly with MTV. Like it's difficult to get in, like to win their trust at yes. first. They're friendly yeah. mm-hmm. in both cases, very friendly. But like, it's once you prove yourself to yeah. them, yeah, they'll just keep calling you back. And yeah. it's like they know who they like to work with, and that's that. That's that's just got to be so. I mean, to go back to <laughs> you know the guy waiting desperately to get into that mm-hmm. that group mm-hmm. at the end of college, mm-hmm. and then to now be in that. That's a fraternity that. Oh, oh it is. Jesus Christ, man! It is. It's like it's. I, I just I love them. They're they're super fun to work with, yeah. and, and they do like they do huge stuff. Sure, like this and and you know 
pilots and stuff. Yep. But then also just like they they like to do smaller weird kind of stuff also. Yeah. And uh, I did a weird little short with them at the end of last year that I can't wait to see. Just a goofy thing, just yeah. for fun. And uh, like yeah, they're they're very active and they just they just like to do stuff. And I'm, I'm thrilled to be in that orbit. Yeah. Uh, that uh, that first shoot day with Tom Lennon and Rachel Harris, I was like, I think I'm going to cry. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. waiting to go on. Um, and, and they shoot very fast. They do, like, three or four whole, like, sketches in a day, mm-hmm. which is unheard of. Jesus. Uh, and I think ours was the last. Mm-hmm. And it was the day after my birthday. Mm-hmm. Like, my... Uh, 30-something of birthday mm-hmm. and I was super hungover mm-hmm. and uh, and waiting to go on and I was like I don't like I don't know how I'm going to keep up with these two because they're yeah. like geniuses and, uh, and it, like as soon as oh I, I was nervous as hell and and I like I, was, I think that I, it was probably pretty obvious because I was pacing and mm-hmm. whatever and I think I still smoked at the time mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, Tom pulled me aside just before the camera started rolling and was like just remember we're playing awful people. Mm-hmm. We're just playing awful, awful people. Mm-hmm. And like, and, and that just suddenly I was like, oh, okay, everything mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah. I just have to go and be the worst person I can be. Yeah, and just fuck around, and they will edit it and make it all look good. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And that was the best. That's insane. Uh, is is this? I mean, this is probably not the first ensemble thing you heard, obviously, but right. is it the first thing that really like uh, uh, stuck with you, or is there early stuff you, know, you can remember that? Uh, I loved early Saturday Night Live. Although, yeah. again, I didn't get most of it. Sure, um, sure. I you know I loved Carol Burnett. Yeah. Um yeah. and uh I even remember like I remember the, the Mary Tyler Moore show that David Letterman was on. She had mm-hmm. a nighttime variety show for mm-hmm. half a season. Yeah. That uh that I remember I really liked. Uh and then David Letterman's morning show, which had a lot of crazy sketch right. stuff on it. I loved but this, uh the National Lampoon album was like to me it was like uh it, it was almost like, because uh, I, I was starting to love like oh, college music also uh-huh, again uh-huh. because of my older brothers because they were in college when I was sure. a little kid, uh, but they would come home with like records by the Clash and stuff like that, and it was stuff that my peers didn't know. Yeah, and it made me feel awesome. so good to know things that other people didn't know. Yeah, and this was sort of that. Like yeah. it was like this was like an indie comedy album. Yeah, you know? it's again. It seems it's, like being introduced into a fraternity in, yeah. in its own way. Like yeah. comedy is that way for a lot of people. Once they yeah. realize that, for some people like me, it was like Monty Python. Oh, sure. You know, you know, oh, I'm the only one who gets this. Clearly, you oh, know. Yeah, around, yeah, you know, yeah. Where did you grow up originally? St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, so that's basically where my that's where my dad's side of the family is oh, from. Really? So yeah. Um, so how did that inform your your comedy interests? Uh, well. I, I, I don't I don't know that it did yeah. so much. I mean, yeah, there, obviously, fun. there's a lot there's a lot of you know craziness and repression there that's fun to sure. make fun of. Sure, um, but there uh, there used to be on Saturday mornings on KMOX and AM station uh, a thing called the Saturday Morning Comedy Hour. Uh huh. And, uh, and my dad and I would like you know he would time his errands just to like listen to it, mm-hmm. and it would be a lot of like Nichols and May and Bob oh. and Ray and things like that and, yeah. uh, and so I would all I would like beg to come along with them and we would just sit yeah. and listen to that stuff because like a lot of it is just absolutely brilliant yeah. and, it, and it was sort of like the National Lampoon would not get played because it was sort of, of you know it was an earlier sort of cleaner time or whatever <laughs> sure. um, but that shit was great yeah like oh my god that's amazing because you don't Bob really Bob Newhart oh, oh, really stuff. oh yeah god. so is your was your dad a big was he a big comedy fan or did he just appreciate comedy? I think he just appreciated it yeah yeah um, he's kind of like there. There's sort of. It's funny now. Now that we're you know now that I'm a grown up and stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, occasionally like I'll I'll meet my parents in New York because mm-hmm. I like to go to New York a lot. Yeah, and I'll meet them there, and we'll go and see shows. And my dad just flips out over shows. Yeah, like even even if they're mediocre, he just gets into a zone where he's bless you, where he's just like he just whoops and hollers at the yeah. end of the show. Like he gets so excited Holy about shit. it, and that's a side that I didn't. I guess didn't know was there. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's weird to think like I might have gotten my performing side from my dad, who's yeah. a stockbroker. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's he's he gets really into it. Like loves a spectacle. Yeah. And it's just not a. That's not something I ever knew. That's so interesting. It's weird. The things you learned about your parents. Yeah. Just later. When yeah. They're, when they're comfortable to be people with you. Yeah. Exactly. Um. Just make sure. Oh, Greece okay. too. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That got called out yesterday too. One of the really? Guys. Yeah, he started uh, singing songs from the show, which I was really really. Cool. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, uh, that that one's signed by 
Leif Green, who plays Davy, uh-huh. was very he's hidden in the corner there. Yeah, I, the the saddest thing I've ever seen on film uh-huh. is uh, uh, is Michelle Pfeiffer sort of galloping out of the frame at the end uh-huh. of Cool Rider. <laughs> There's a whole thing where she's like the jean jacket is sort of half on and half off, mm-hmm. and she does this weird. Yeah, it's not quite a dance. It's yeah, supposed to be. It is, and it's. <laughs> And, and, yeah, C O O L R I D E R. <laughs> Even the song is out of ideas. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Know? It's just it's really bad. Yeah. It yeah. is real bad. And I loved it so much as a kid. And then yeah. I got this. Yeah, I loved it a lot as a kid because I was introduced to that just as a young. Just I was just young, and it was exciting and fun. And they had leather yeah. jackets, so that was cool. Sure. And I hadn't seen Grease first for some reason. Right. And uh, then. Uh, and then when I got older, it was like, oh, okay, I can be ironic now. I'm a, I'm a teenager. I get yeah. it. It's dumb. Oh, but I still, you know, I get it. Yeah. And then years later, I didn't. I started a documentary that didn't get completed where I was interviewing a bunch of people who love this movie. Yeah. And I got a new appreciation for it because this one guy basically got the uh, uh, the impetus for him to come out was because of this movie. And I was like, really? Is that important for this guy? And he came out. Wow. And like, All right. I can't really deny it. I saw Caulfield has some, some movie. raw sexual power. I will say that. Yeah. If I had seen that as a kid, I think it would have come out much earlier. Right, right. Well, you can see Leif Beautiful. Green right there. You can actually see it, him, him staring at him. He, he admitted thoroughly he had the biggest crush on him in the world. Is he the, is he the guy? Uh, yeah, to him? yeah, Davey. Yeah, the little one. Yeah. The one who signed this. Yeah, he was yeah. just... <laughs> when we interviewed him, he was just gushing over it. It was the funniest thing. Ever. Interesting. Yeah, he's, uh, he's beautiful. <laughs> mm-hmm. And he's married to... Haley Mills? Yes. Yes, he is. She's like 20 years older than him. It's crazy. He's, he's, he's like 50 something now, so she's in her 70s. Holy shit. Was she. <laughs> she wasn't. Oh, is it Haley Mills or Juliet Mills? Haley. Okay. The, the one from uh, Parent Trap. Or oh. not, yeah, Parent Trap, yeah. Because she's not the one who was on Passions, right? No, I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. Although Adrian's Med was on Passions. Was he really? Yes, he played a head in a box. Like a. I'll be damned. <laughs> <laughs> it kills me that show's not I know way too much. It was That's terrible. That's why oh, I hear that show. It was so bad. Yeah. It's the worst thing I've ever seen on television. It's fascinating. That's great. Yeah. And you didn't have to watch it all the time. Like, it would be the same, they would be at the same party mm-hmm. talking about, like, I've just found this newspaper. It says you're not the father, or whatever. And, uh, but for like three weeks. Holy you know shit. I mean? And they'd all be standing in the same position, wearing the same clothes. It was so slow, but it was like for people with brain damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. That's amazing. God, I love that. <laughs> Bless me, Father, for I've sinned. And how long has it been since your last confession, my about son? About four months, I guess, Father. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, I missed Mass about 15 times. I lied a lot. Uh, I fucked this girl. Uh, Excuse my French, Father. Uh, I went all the way with this girl. Don't be embarrassed, my son. I've heard it all before. I've heard much, much worse than that. You heard Conalingus? I hear that from second graders. Wow. Wobbly warhead, you heard that? Slamming a warhead at her? Years ago, years ago. Low clearance clit, you heard that? Dwarf cock. Bosom burger? Scrotum breath. Albino beaver? Iguana tits. You know what we used to call nuns? Penguin pussy. You bangy bottom. Madam ovary? Slime slit. Mashy nipple lick? Bug nuts. Cock nose? Vagina. Oriental crack? Superdome pussy. After birth on toast? That's pizza. Punk piss. Hillbilly snatch? Boob pus. You heard rhino clit? Rhino clit? That's disgusting. That's terrible. Nice mouth. You kiss your mother with that mouth? You, you eat with that mouth? Garbage mouth. Garbage mouth, toilet tongue, uh, sewer mouth, sewer chute. Are there other, um, well, I'm sure there are others, but are there other, like, big vinyl albums that stick out to you? They wouldn't have to stick out as vinyl, because a lot of people are coming right. into, like, uh, tapes, whatever. Right. Uh, comedy-wise? Yeah. Hmm. Or, you know, you talk about music. A couple people have come on. Jordan Morris came on yesterday and talked about They Might Be Giants for Oh, yeah. So, oh, Lord. Yeah. Um, yeah, that goes hand in hand with being a company nerd, doesn't I, it? I think yeah, it does. They might be giants. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like them a lot, but the same kind of thing. Like, I, I, I like them, but they came out in high school, and, mm-hmm. or they came out when I was in high school, and, and, and it, I really liked them a lot, yeah. but then there were other kids who liked them a real lot. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and wore trench coats and stuff. <laughs> yep, And yep. it was like, I don't know if I can fully go on board with this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see, what did I love? Um... I've just always, like, even after my brothers graduated college and became real people and whatever and stopped, you know, like, being as into music, Mm -hmm. I, them bringing home stuff like this and, like, The Clash and, like, you know, um, the English beat and whatever, the things that, like, only certain people knew, Mm -hmm. like, I stayed that way forever. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I've, it just made me like root for the underdog forever. Yeah, uh, I remember there was a guy named Tommy Keen who I sort of know in real life now, uh-huh. uh, who was like this incredible pop songwriter. Uh-huh. And he, and, uh, and if you know him, you love him. Okay, 
uh, and, but most people don't. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I remember this is like first like big big album came out, big big like major label album came out in '86. Okay. And uh, and I just seized on it, and I fucking loved it. And I was the only person I knew who knew who he was, or liked him, or cared about mm-hmm. him. Uh, there was one girl at a girls' school that like I sort of knew who, mm-hmm. and, like we we knew that we were the only Tommy Keen fans in the world. And we went to see him and Miss, at Mississippi Nights on the landing in St. Louis, and we uh-huh. were like two of the six people there, the only two people dancing, and like, and I'll never forget it. It was like, yeah, like, this kind of shit made me love The Underdog yeah. forever. Yeah. You know, and I still do. Yeah. Um, like, I like everything, but I especially love The Underdog. Sure. Is, is there uh, any any comedy that you can think of that kind of fits that that Ooh, people don't I think about? fucking love? Because I keep, I keep discovering stuff that I know was big at one time, but now nobody fucking cares about. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, uh, The Ruddles. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like that was something that, like, to me was like it was a huge part of my life seeing that on public television when yeah. I was like eight years old or something. Yeah, and I absolutely loved it. And it's one of those things that that also like you get older, and most people now now people know what it is. Sure, it's, you know you can get it on DVD or whatever. Of course, but like in the early '80s, before it was released on vinyl, it was just this thing that would pop up on late night TV. Yeah, sometimes. yeah. Um, like people didn't know about it, and mm-hmm. I loved knowing about it. And yeah, I'd like scour the TV guide to see if it was coming. That's out. That's awesome. Um, yeah, God, I love that. I would love to find that again. Yeah, we we did we did an episode about that yeah. recently. Um, where we, I, I mean, I, I grabbed the soundtrack. It's God, it's it's it. I, I mean, to me, it still holds up. Yeah, you know, I mean, we talked about like when we talked about the album, we talked about the music, and we were like, some of it's maybe for some people who were there. We had a couple people who didn't really like the Rolls as much as I love it. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, well, it doesn't. It's not. Some of it's a little too close to the Beatles or. Whatever, but and some of it's just like parody for the sake of it. But I, I yeah. still think nobody else is really. I mean, it, it, it spawned a whole new mockumentary yeah. thing. You know, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. Spinal Tap was I think only three or four years later. Yeah, you know, so um, yeah, yeah. I can see the Ruddles. The Ruddles is the just Ruddles are absolutely amazing. amazing. Uh, I'm trying to think what else I had on like vinyl or cassette that was comedy growing up. There wasn't a ton. There yeah. really wasn't like yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh, let's let's go through. Let's go. Uh, you jog know, my memory. This, this is for the listener. It's early have. on a Sunday morning. Yeah, yeah well, it's not early. I, I have fifty more in there. Um, but let's see. We've got some. We got some George Carlin. We got some Tom Lehrer. We got some Andy Griffith. More Tom Lehrer. Apparently, we got Joan Rivers, which I haven't certainly Joan yet. Rivers. This is not I always like Joan Rivers. I think that my parents thought that Joan Rivers was much dirtier than she really was. Yeah, yeah. I she think really I've, I've had that concept. Was it? No, not at all. No. She really wasn't. She was a little bit racy, but not really. Sure. There's some Jack and, In fact, when she had her, um, uh, when she had her early, uh, she had like a morning show for yeah. a while. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and that would sometimes be on when I was at home having breakfast or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and she would sometimes like, you know, be talking to a guest or whatever and laugh and then laugh harder, mm-hmm. and my mother would be like, she's thinking of something filthy, dirty, that she can't say on TV. <laughs> she is filthy. Yeah. And, like, I don't think she was. I think, you know, sometimes <laughs> you're just filling time. Yeah, 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 of course. Trying to think of the next thing to say or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah, Now doing it, like, there's a lot of fucking stuff that you think is a certain way. Yeah. It's really just the person trying to think of something next to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ex- exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I fucking love John Rivers. I remember a kid down the street had the uh, What Becomes a Semi-Legend Most. Uh-huh, yeah. I love that one, too. Yeah, I haven't listened to it yet. I need to. It's I've pretty good. I've never heard it. I've never it's heard it. It's pretty funny. I've only seen her TV stuff, so... Yeah, it's pretty funny. That's, That's awesome. It's pretty funny. She, uh, yeah... She's uh, she's good. I, I don't uh, I don't care about people's clothes. I wish mm-hmm. that she would go in a different direction. Yeah, yeah. Just be yeah funny. Yeah, right? talk about right. other shit because <laughs> you're really funny. I, same goes for Kathy Griffin. I think Kathy Griffin is mm-hmm. hilarious. Yeah. Um, when she's talking about her personal life, right, right. right. I don't care that she thinks Clay Aiken is gay or right. whatever, right? Because he is. Yeah. And we've always known it. Yeah. And, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's it's interesting when people get caught up in, in in sort of well, you know, they've got a character that, that's paying, you know. Yeah. So I guess that's what you do. But yeah. it's, it's it's too bad when they're like great comedic minds at work. Yeah, and I don't understand how Joan Rivers is still. How old is she now? How she's still doing it? Old, you know, she's gotta like, be in her eighties. She still got apparently quite a sharp mind, and it's still quite yeah. funny as fuck. And like, did you see the uh, the documentary? No, I really want to. It's good. It's really it good. Yet. But spoiler: there, she's got like file cabinets full of index cards of mm-hmm. jokes. Holy shit! Like a wall oh. of drawers full of yeah. jokes. You don't see that anymore. No, you don't. Comedians aren't like that. Anymore. No, they're not. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But yeah. I feel like I would love to meet somebody my age who who if I they, they have a secret room that they don't want to tell everybody yeah. about this, well, you know? Well, they do, and it's Twitter. Yeah, you know that's I mean? true. Like, that's, that's true. What, that's all I do yeah. all day long is yeah. just make 
jokes on Twitter. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then and then the thing the thing that bums me out is that like then they're just out there and they're gone and I forget about them. Yeah. And they're not like I guess they're compiled by the Library of Congress. Really? True. Yeah. Really? Like they're yeah they're all being compiled by the Library of Congress. Um, and I would love to look at some of my earlier work. Yeah. But I can't like I can't access it because Twitter only goes back so far. Really. And uh, yeah, I'd like to I'd like to see how I've uh, grown as a as a Twitter sure as a Twitter artist. That's insane. Yeah. That's but, worked up really. But yeah, I, yeah, I don't. I'm pretty sure that's true. Yeah. It sounds like it's not true, but I think it is. no, it is one of those things. It sounds like yeah. Um, that's funny. Weird, uh, right? Yeah. Um, did you, I'm, I'm trying to think. Oh, I had a sketch group that I wanted to ask you about. Mm. I was totally gonna, and I'm totally blanking on it right mm. now. I probably just have to go th- hunt through my. We'll fix right this now. post. What? <laughs> yeah, right. I've already asked you about uh, about fire sign, and that's, yeah. that wasn't necessarily your thing. Maybe maybe if there's nope. something in here. Um, there's some new heart. There's some nickels in May actually. Sure. Queen is not comedy. I don't know why Queen is in there. Some others, brothers, some others. Is it uh, uh, News of the World? Uh, yeah, News of the World is in there. There's okay. The because you know what? I'm not a huge fan of mm-hmm. uh, of Family Guy. But uh-huh. it, it was on uh, last week or the week before, mm-hmm. and I was just lazy on my couch. Mm-hmm. And there was a whole subplot about how terrifying the News of the World album cover. Oh was. yeah, it's scary. And like, and I hadn't thought of it in a long time. Yeah. But that like, I remember being six years old and just being like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, no, it creeps Why is there a robot out. made of stone <laughs> that's got blood on his hand? And yeah. Like, What's going on? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you know I what it was? for a good long time. I found, um, it's, uh, it's, uh, and again, you don't have, this is Spinal Tap. Oh yeah. Um, so I don't know, because, you know, I didn't see Spinal Tap until much later in my life. Like, I was probably well into my 20s before I saw Spinal Tap. Which is weird. So how did it hit you being, because I think it's one of those things that does work really well as a young teenager. Yeah. You know, like Monty Python. Yeah. It's also, it's one of those things that had been pumped up for so long that you couldn't quite live up to it. Sure. Of course it was great. Yeah. But, you know what I really loved uh, was uh, in the early days of DVD, Mm. uh, it came out and they did the commentary in character. Yes. I don't know if it was the first Final Tap DVD, it might have been like a special edition mm-hmm. or whatever, but that to me was absolutely brilliant. Brilliant, yeah. Super funny, and like, funny through the whole thing. Sure. Hello! <laughs> We've been um, too loud. Okay. That's She's my whispering voice. still. My voice carries. No, you're fine. I think somebody else came in. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Maybe our next person. Oh, who's, who's our next person? Cole Stratton. Oh, I know Cole Stratton. Yeah, I know. You were, you were on his show. He's lovely. He's a very nice fellow. Very nice guy. Um... Uh, no, but I think it was going to be. I also wanted to ask you about Monty Python if that ever. Oh yeah, happened. yeah, 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 yeah. The um, the first time around, um, I was kind of too young to get it. Sure. Um, and it was just so surreal, and and, and I, I don't know why it didn't click with me. Yeah. When I was a little little kid. Mm-hmm. Um, but when it came back on MTV in the eighties. Yeah. Uh, like that was it was right when I would get home from school. There would mm-hmm. be like two episodes in a row, and I absolutely loved it. Yeah. I I just I would tape it and then watch it again. Yeah. Uh, absolutely loved it. Mm-hmm. And again, because it's just weird. It was mm-hmm. just those guys following what they thought was funny. Right. Right. You know? And like, and if you didn't get it, fine. But it was it was just totally their own crazy thing. It's already noon here in Burgerglob, Yugoslavia, where little Nadia Komenich is preparing for her final floor exercise. Alex Van Diesel, do you think it's a little chilly here in the Tito Pavilion today? It sure is, Don. And you know, Don, the new leotards the girls are wearing this year are cut to ride so high on the buttocks and hips that this chilly air is finding a lot of exposed young flesh. Already I can see that little goosebumps have risen on the thighs of the young Romanian girl. Alex, it looks like Nadia is ready to begin. She stands erect, pert little chest thrust out, shoulders back, head held high. And she begins with a leap and a cabriole into a hurdle jump, followed by a flick flack. And a front handspring, then a step out into a chasse forward, and a perfect handstand. Ooh. So far, Don, a flawless performance. And now a stomach roll, a fish hop, a tinsica forward. Now two mounter flip flops, followed by a lunge into a tuck somersault, and an Arab spring. Don, did you notice how Nadia's nipples stood out? Absolute perfection. Boy, I'd like to fuck her. Well, Don, I'm no Leslie, but. Hello, you're on the air. Do you miss possessing an album for for new material that you get? I do. Yeah, I do. I do. In fact, I just went to uh, to Amoeba the other mm-hmm. day, and I bought I, I bought some CDs, which mm-hmm. I hadn't done in so long. And CDs are great, but yeah, I do miss I miss vinyl. Yeah, I have a turntable at home, and and I I, I really like taking out a record and putting it on and yeah. all that. Like it sounds so warm and yeah. Not to bring up Chris so Hardwick big. again, but Chris Hardwick was talking about the smell of vinyl, which yeah. he's never talked about before. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's uh 
It is great. There is a place called Bar One uh-huh. on uh, Whitsitt and Burbank, very uh-huh. close to where I live. And, uh, and they do a vinyl night on, I think it's Wednesday. Really? Yeah. You can bring in vinyl. Uh, you sign up. They'll play a side of whatever vinyl you bring in. That's and awesome. it's great. That's it's amazing. really good. It just, sound, it just sounds sounds like home. It's, it's hard for me to like say, you know, have a thing that's about vinyl and then say I appreciate vinyl without people think I'm being a hipster. But I do think right. there's something to I mean, hell, this is a giant, like, this is a poster quality disc that I yeah. have of a picture. Yeah. I'd like to frame it, although then I wouldn't be able to play it. But, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, what I, what I, and I've been thinking about this, uh, like, uh, I've been very deeply into uh, early 70s Stevie Wonder, because uh-huh. he had, a, a, like, a patch in the early 70s that was just yeah. was untouchable. Yeah. And, uh, and the, the idea of, like, Intervisions coming out, mm-hmm. and you had to go to the store to buy it, and you yeah. buy it, and you couldn't even listen to it on the way home. Right. Because there's no, there's no, there's nothing for you to do that with. Sure. You know? Yeah. There weren't even eight tracks yet when that yeah. came out. Yeah. So you have to go home and unwrap it and put it, like... You had there was a room in your house that you had to be in if you wanted to hear an album. Yeah, you could just take it with you anywhere you went. Right, and like that must have just been th- that amount of of build up mm-hmm. to su- to an album that is so incredibly good. Yeah, must have just blown people away. Absolutely, no wonder people were on so many drugs. Yeah, 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 you know absolutely. what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like it just it's the only way to make the experience better. Yeah, you know? and I think the only the, the big difference here since we're talking about comedy is nobody's re- not I won't say no one's releasing comedy albums, but it's yeah. just stand up. So I've got a new hour. I'm going to do my my right. album, and a lot of them fall into the ether. Unfortunately, yeah. there's no sketch guys. There's like you know there's uh, what do you call it? There's um Super like good. an old man. Sure, yeah. There's that, and then there's also uh, what's the fuck. Lonely Island, the Lonely Island. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're, they're more of a music group. They're not such a sketch group, you yeah. know, but you're not seeing that. There's no influx in the 70s, which is where most of these dis- discs are from. Yeah. The 60s and 70s, there's just this huge, there had to have been a huge demand for comedy yeah. at home, but now that we've got the internet, I feel like that's... No, it's, you know, everything is flooded. Like, I, you know, I like to think of myself as somebody who keeps up. I can't keep up. Sure. There's too much stuff coming out. Right. You know, I, there, there are so many bands that have like huge fan bases, sure. and a bunch of albums, and I just don't. I don't know who they are yeah. because I can't. Right, and There's I just don't. Too much stuff coming at me from every angle. Yeah, it's to the point where I, you know, I just turned thirty-one and I feel like an old man because I feel like, yeah. like I couldn't watch MTV at this point because okay. I would feel, you know, yeah. there's just too much. It is not going to get better. No. No, 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 no. It's only going to get worse. Yeah, it's frightening to me. Yeah. Um, if uh, what I usually ask people towards the end yep. is uh, if if uh, someone is to ask you. You know, why should I listen to this album? Why would you recommend it to somebody? I would say um, that it is just such a, like, it is such an assault of just crazy, creative, uh, just weird, smart humor. Yeah. Um, none of it goes on too long. I don't think anything's longer than two minutes. No, no. It's just, it is just this crazy, rapid fire, short attention span. Uh, like just onslaught of comedy yeah. that like is funny, mm-hmm. but then when you put it in its like historical perspective, mm-hmm. is crazy. Like this was 1977. Yeah, there was nothing like this. There was no, there was no Adult Swim. There was no. I mean, right. there was barely Saturday Night Live. Mm-hmm. There, there was no like they didn't borrow from anybody. They sure. just like got a tree of weed yep. and like went yep. to a studio and just recorded a bunch of crazy shit and yeah. it's really funny and it holds together. Yeah, it's 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 one of those things that doesn't feel written. It's so hard. You know, yeah. like there's a lot of great sketch albums that don't feel written to me. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to yeah. It, it, it just and, and also it just seems like fun. It just yeah. seems like they are they are having so much fun yeah. with each other. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. I really appreciate coming on. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Before we go, you should probably plug anything coming up and anything that people can find you on. Let's see. Uh, AdrinkWithDave.com. We're about to do a little Kickstarter for our second season. Nice. uh, Because we want to be able to pay our crew. Yeah. We, paid, we literally paid them in sandwiches yeah. uh, last season, and yeah. they're really good, and they're worth more than sandwiches. Yeah. So we're going to try and uh, kickstart that. It's a really good uh, show. Thank you very much. Uh, I also have a pilot on H2 uh-huh. um, called How Many People Does It Take? And mm-hmm. it should be airing again soon. Uh, just do a little TiVo search for it. Okay. Or, or check my Twitter, at Dave Holmes. I will, I will plug it relentlessly. Nice. It's about to air. Uh, because I'd love to be able to do more. Sweet. And, uh, oh, and the Friday 40... Uh, the, the little comedy game show that I do with my friend Scott Gimple uh, is going to be moving to the Nerd Melt Theater. Nice. Uh, sometime in May or June. We don't have the exact dates yet, but again, follow me on Twitter. Awesome. And I'll let you know. All right, Dave. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, uh, uh, you know, everybody. This was fun. Thanks for listening. And Listen to the album. It's really funny. Please do. And have a good thing. Have a good thing.
Come on, goddammit, excuse me, but this is ridiculous. We've been, we've been putting out, not put up, put up or shut up. We're going off the air if you don't do it. I mean, you're only hurting yourself. All right, I'm sorry. Nobody's calling now because I blew up. Now, I'm sorry. I'll play a record or something. But please, somebody call 555-2150. I'm sorry for yelling. I apologize. <laughs> Comedy on Vinyl is recorded at Fort Awesome Studios in beautiful downtown Burbank, California. Our producer is Mike Warden, our host is Jason Klom, and he's also the editor. Comedy on Vinyl is a stolen dress entertainment production. You can check out all of our other podcasts, books, videos, other audio stuff, probably some writing, at StolenDress.com. And uh, please check out Comedy on Vinyl at Facebook.com slash Comedy on Vinyl, Twitter.com slash Comedy on Vinyl. And please subscribe to us on iTunes, rate us highly, and spread the word. Thank you so much for listening to Comedy on Vinyl this week, and have a very good thing. Lava, ram it to me. Lava, slam it to me. Oh, oh baby. You know I got a love thing for you, girl. Let's just go on and on and on. You ain't never been loved like you're gonna be loved when I love you now, baby. I'm gonna take you further than you ever can, girl. There's no end to my love machine. This rocket ship of mine is gonna take you to the moon, gonna show you the stars. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great! Oh, great. Great for you, maybe. What about me, Mr. Rocket Ship? What about you? You are beautiful after the tune. Oh, take me to the moon, take you to the stars. Don't you think you have some unfinished business, fruit? I'm hungry. I'm going to go fix myself a double-decker sandwich, finish an entire bag of potato chips, and drink a couple of beers. Do you want anything? Do I want anything? Yeah, I want something. What? What? What do you mean, what? Get over it. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me.